Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. That true? Ooh. You've had hardcore hemorrhoids for 12 years? Yeah, I just refuse to go to the doctor. Why? I just, I, I, you know, I just ignore doctors, and I just ignore pain. You only take shits, like, every four days, right? Yeah, six. Four to six. It's preserved meats and bread. That's how that works. Is that healthy? I like, what did you just call? I think it is. What would you call Budweiser right before the show started? It's but heavy. probiotic. Yeah. This is a natural. Yeah. But heavy. Yeah, 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 this one really started calm. You know, it wasn't it a... Was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't Wait a fucking... Minute, we're you, bring it up. you know why? You, you know why? Oh, I thought you were referring because to... Because our guest is crazy. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Tell the people your name. Uh, John Stites. Yeah, you're goddamn right. Goddamn right. We met the other night. You hosted Jared's birthday bash in LA. Do you remember any of that? Absolutely. Uh, he fucking destroyed. Yes, he did. You came up. I, I would say that's probably the hardest circumstance for a comedian to come on to. I hope you caught my lead in people. Though, when we were closing. Did you catch that? Uh, no, I was right. too busy bringing up my own fucking mic stand. I yelled. Well, yeah. right as we were, why, right as I we was were like, ending, dog. I was literally digging in. This, I was going back to my open mic days. I was like, "Fuck, man, I'm walking up here cold, no mic stand. I got my fucking shit in my <laughs> this hand." This is showbiz, baby. I know, though. <laughs> I'm Absolutely, gonna, man. You know, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I, like I told Jared, because uh, how rowdy that crowd was. It was. I mean, and we, they were, were we were already fucking tossed and fucking rocked. Like I, every shot was a double. Yeah, it was J Mo, J Mo, J Mo. Fuck I you guys. I gotta do Let's a do shot it. with you. I gotta do it's a shot. It's Jared's with you. birthday. He hasn't taken his shit in four days. I want him to fucking <laughs> shit in front of us. And then afterwards, when we had that crazy ass show, I told Jared, I was like, this guy's gonna bomb, dude. And I was like, not because of what you are as a comedian. Just because of the hecticness. That room was too much. They were loud as fuck. You rolled out, dude, slam that mic into the ground, and you go, I'm ready to do a, do a set, and you absolutely crushed. And I turned to Jared, and I was like, who's this motherfucker? Let's get him on the show. I did uh, I did Black Rooms on the Road for five years, man, looking like a fucking neo-Nazi. So What's, what's getting, a oh, Black Room? Yeah, yeah, so black like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I, they would only book me with black headliners for five hours. And that's the hardest stand-up of anybody's period. life. Yes, yeah. because yeah, yeah, white yeah. people will do like the pleasant golf clap if they don't like something. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking brothers, man, will tear your ass to shreds. Get off the like, stage, what idiot! What the fuck, motherfucker? And you're yeah. just like, Jesus. It's like the first fucking three minutes of Saving Private Ryan. You're just like, fucking, just, <laughs> yeah. just fucking <laughs> dig in. Uh, you got yeah. Dodge the one. 40s. Yeah. Dodge the 40s. <laughs> Get those first couple punchlines in. Establish and bring the beachhead. I'll a couple bring him, cobras heading I'll, your I'll way. Bring him, I'll bring him around. Yeah, he looked mad, but he all right, man. I just need to hear that motherfucker out. You're like, all right, all right. Yeah, I mean that, that was, was a blast, dude. That was that was not an easy room, dude. No, nah, but you know what, man? It. If you don't, if you can't handle that shit, go do improv, man. That's why stand ups are what they are, man. Go yeah. to, go to the fucking groundlings, and I'm not shitting on them. That's fine, but it brought me back to what appealed to me about comedy in the first place, man. Is it's almost like because I'm a combative person by nature, and there's almost like a combat. You know, Elements oratory. It. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's just fun, man. It's just every night getting up in front of fucking four hundred drunk assholes. That that that's a great segue for a question that I already wanted to ask. What is like the most combative or heckler person you've had in the crowd? Where you're just like, I'm uh, gonna put this fucking mic down and knock you the fuck out. Easy bachelorette parties. Ask any stand up comic. You punch a woman. Wait, bachelorette parties. <laughs> you punch oh, a woman. Which is which? Wait. Huh? Bachelor Wait, parties or bachelor? Bachelor is a dude's party. Bachelorette chicks. is chicks. Chick. Okay, bachelor. Yeah, whichever one's okay. a big load of fucking entitled, you know, very dicks, often. The dick straws, uh, dick, dick yes, cups. A dude, giant yes. sash that yeah, says yeah, yeah. bride to yes. be. Spend their Seriously. whole life fucking running away from dicks and then on one well, night now they're the surrounded by them. Now the people you've ever encountered. Absolutely. It's a fucking bachelorette party. Absolutely. Now and put a stand up comedian yay. in front of it. Yep. And of course, Becky knows how to make the show better. Yeah. Yeah. And then and you can't win, man, because if you go because if you because if you go in on him, it's oh he's a fucking asshole. He's just they're just trying to have fun. It's girls' night out. But if you do nothing, fucking show. they sense that weakness like a pack of hyenas, man, and they just they'll <laughs> hijack the whole shit, man. I'm telling you, ask any stand up comic. Yeah, yeah, but you had a the worst. great I mean, you you know from years of doing this how to disarm a heckler, and you did yes. it at the show. Yeah. That motherfucker said something. You go, you think you <laughs> you think you got something to make this joke better, bitch? I yeah. remember because he did, like, I was half joking about him looking like a school shooter, but that dude for sure had a manifesto or at least had Googled the word recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Those glasses, yep. and he was in the front going, me, me. No. And I was just like, man, he, dude, that don't raise your hand. At a right. That motherfucker had eight pages written somewhere, dude, that we don't for know sure. about. Yeah. For sure. And, Hands like, I'm not, a, I'm not a badass, but I'm a pretty, 
I'm a bald, tattooed biker, 45. Like, I'm an aggressive dude. We had to for you to kick a dude out of your fucking Bill Burr show. Yeah. Remember? Well, do you know <laughs> Me, what, you, Chase. Did, did, did you guys even hear what wound up happening? No. The guy no, who flashed a gun and the cops came. And, oh, no shit. Yeah, oh, man. Shit. One of, uh, and we know it ain't connected to you. It's one, your, your fucking crowd was amazing, man. I had so much fun partying with oh, y'all. wait, this was after our thing. I yeah. thought you were talking about Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. shit, really. One of, one of the guys in the crowd who loved you guys who kept going, shot, man, one of those motherfuckers. Well, we found him, we stayed after he smoked cigars and played pool, and he was in the fucking bathroom stall throwing up and Joe, who's our security guard and a member, he dude, he's 30 years retired at LAPD. There's a reason we pay him. He's nice. He walks the guy out, even though the guy's lippy. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible, but no, well, we, we're got, we got an hour. We got, got nothing cool. but time, bro. And then, so because he, you know we're being nice to him, there's about six of us hammer drunk. We could just beat the fuck out of the guy and put him behind a dumpster, but we didn't. Trying to be nice, guy immediately knocks after we put him out. Like 10 minutes later, I go. Through the door, because I'm drunk too. I go, man, you gotta go home, dude. I can't let you back in, or we're responsible for you. And this is what he hit me with. He goes, I got a shit. Yeah. What guy doesn't let a guy? I go, yeah. man, all right. Like he, there's nothing else he could have said other than that. And I was just like, like come yeah, on, man, I feel you, bro. Come you on, got a shit. Yeah, I get it. Then he I threw up it. all over the place, pin pinballing back and forth. Hours he goes in his car. He wants his keys. The whole thing. And at the end, he flashed a gun, and you know. On purpose? Oh yeah, yeah. Pull the gun on Mike's our commander, and Mike's a marine, and he's a Mike's no punk, man. I mean, he's politically, you know, calm and an older guy. But if you fucking piss him off, man, he'll he'll bash your face in. And this dude just back, 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 kept at him, and finally Mike was like, "Man, if you don't get the fuck out of here, I'm gonna crack your fucking face open." The dude pulled a gun on him, and Mike was just like, "Shut the door, called the cops, and shit." Yeah, it's crazy, man. Wow. What kind of parties are you guys hosting over man, here, man? Hey, shit got wild. We were, it we did, man. Gone. Hey, we and I got to give it up to you guys, man. When you first told me, when you were like, hey, we're going to do it. Because, I, you know, I've listened to you guys before, but everyone comes out to L.A. And they've always got these big ideas. No one does shit. And people who have draws and followings in other places will come here just thinking that's going to transfer over. And the level of competition for shows out here, people just don't come out to shit. So when you were like, man, we're going to have a great crowd. I was like, on a weekday. A Wednesday? A Wednesday, yeah. and it was just like a day or two before y'all really started promoing. And I'll be honest, man, I told Lee, and I was like, we're going to see. But I was like, I've seen the way these people drink. If we can get six of these fucking Vikings, that's like 15 regular people. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're so, two people. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's what I told so him, So we'll do a good night on the bar. Oh, it was it was mind-blowing. I'm sure. <laughs> it was mind-blowing. Like, I'm and sure I fucking that told them. bar tab was the, the highest they've had there ever. In, well, yeah. I mean, for just, for, I mean there was a good I'll chunk say, and I'll everybody say this, was going the longest hard. The longest thing I could remember was 30 years back. And other than like big events where we've brought in like Bill Burr or like a band or something, for just sure, a sure. regular night, that was by far the biggest, by a... By a shit that's load that anyone could remember. So fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, guys, every live event we've done, that's the same thing. I mean, I remember we did one in North Carolina, and within three hours of being there, I was like, I'll take a shot of Jameson. Like, we're sold out of Jameson. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> what? Yeah. They went through like fucking 15 bottles of Jameson in two or three hours. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, and the, 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 and again, man, I'm not just on here to suck y'all's dick, but, you know, these do, the, the, these are truths that need to be said. Normally, it sucks following a podcast. It yeah, just yeah, normally sure. sucks. For sure. I, in fact, I normally wouldn't do it. But you guys are really fucking funny. You're, and I'd never seen you live, and you never know how that shit's going to translate. Your beats and your cadence and the way you guys run a show is actually quite, quite avant garde, man. I mean, you guys absolutely know what the fuck you're doing live. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know how to make that transition from one world to the next. Well, I mean, it, it helped because I got my start in stand up comedy. So from 16 to 23, 24 is when I quit. Um, so I, I, all the rooms that you've done, you know, probably in, in the United States, like I, I've done most of them and it's like, all right, cool. You, you start to get a rhythm. So we beat off in the same condo. What they like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did an all black club two once and it's Ooh. fucking ruthless. Um, I was 16 years old, but I did impressions. Jesus. I was, I, I did impressions and shit and I went in during uh. an, an open mic night and you know, I had a fake ID and they were like, "Cool, we'll let we'll let you in," and because they they didn't give a fuck if I lived or died in that motherfucker. Nope. And um, and I'm in Atlanta. Oh, so it's god like, damn, dude, dude. So and I I did, <laughs> and at the time, and, dude, I couldn't do this impression now, but like it was Michael Jackson, Prince, and then I closed with Martin Luther King Jr. You could with a black crowd. It, it, it absolutely destroyed because it was killed. a white kid or whatever, I, yep. and I won. It was like three hundred dollars, right? So at the end of the night, the guy, the club owner, walks me out and he goes. Hey man, 
that was incredible. Don't ever come back here. <laughs> and I was like, why? I don't understand. That's I won. And he goes, well, one, I know you're underage. And I was like, all right, well, why did you let, why did you let me come in and perform? And he goes, because if, if you bombed, it's great for the crowd. Right. If you killed, it's great for the crowd. It's awesome. And I was like, all right, great. Then what's, what's two? And he goes, you just took somebody's fucking rent. And that's when it resonated with me when I was like, oh, fuck. You're yeah. right. Most of these comics are coming in doing rent and, and all this other shit. Yep. But that's why you have to be so great. Yes. Somebody like you where it's just like, all right, rad. But I know those crowds. I know those people. You know how fucked up they get. The hecklers are the goddamn worst. Yeah. Um, but also, like, I find that the best stand... You know, I'll be honest, man. If you ask me... Because I, I can do stand-up in Spanish, so I do a lot of Latin rooms. Um, I do, is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Is the beats not different because of the inflection of the words? Are Jokes you fluent are, in Spanish? Yeah, I was a Spanish professor for four years. Oh, shit. Damn, that's a show cool him, show, you, show him some of the jokes. They, you, you were a linguistics guy before yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah before yeah, I yeah. discovered stand-up. In the military? No, no. Um, I actually, I took the D-Lab. I crushed the D-Lab. This is a true story. I'll make it quick. Uh, I don't I, No, actually, we have all have day. Have crushed the D-Lab. Went home, thought about it for 10 minutes. I was 18. Because my dad speaks seven languages. My mom spoke four. It's sort of a family thing. Um, I don't even really have to work at it. So it's not like I'm some fucking genius. Um, but came back. The recruiter was gone that had talked to me about Monterey in five years. And it was right. going to be Turkish and Mandarin. That once you take that test, I thought it was a test that was going to judge how well I knew Spanish. You listen to a gibberish language they give you f phonetic linguistic rules and you have to translate. You put headphones on. It was fucking bizarre. So I literally walked out. I was like, well, I bombed that fucking thing. And they were like, you tested into like the 98th percentile. So the government knows how to give someone a test to figure out how well you acquire languages. Interesting. Came I back and the fucking infantry recruiter saw my 18 year old ass and was just like, <laughs> you want to kill people, yeah. son? Started in on me. He's like, well, what? I hear, I hear How's the your wrist work? He goes, I hear they're talking about Monterey. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, yeah, but five years. Because you could do two years and 16 weeks back in the Clinton years when I was in, in the peacetime, if you right. chose combat arms. He's like, dude, two years, 16 weeks, you're out. He goes, let me show you this Airborne Ranger video. <laughs> that was a wrap. What'd you do in the military? Infantry. Mortars. Really? Fuck yeah, that's yeah. awesome. No, nah, it 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 I it was it I, I swept a yeah, lot you come, of you come in yeah. as like is that eleven, 11 Charlie. Get, yeah, yeah. 11 Charlie. Yeah. yeah, and they yeah. say it's like I because I was smart for a mortar man, which is like having the biggest dick in China. That really doesn't yeah. you know it's yeah. like Not you're clear. still surrounded by. I was eleven Bravo, bro, so I get it. Oh well, see, because I went through. I'm sorry, man. I keep cutting no, you no, off, I, dude. I was in eleven series too, but I took the I took that D lab. Oh, you I did? Like, yeah, because I speak. I, was, I went to Thai, and uh, you so talk Thai. I do, yeah. I've never met anyone. <laughs> I've never had him order Thai when you're at a Thai I've never event. met anyone else who's taken the D lab in my life ever. That's, well, yeah, that's he, fucking that's awesome. When he was the Green Beret, when he went through special forces, or that's what he learned was Thai. Legion, yeah, yeah. no shit. Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah we've, we've never had Thai before. What's that? We've never had Thai. So I, I, we've never had Thai, man. We should, right? we should, I can we should break Thai, thai together. But that, but that fucking test was actually really fucking fun. I remember going into this thing. I'm like, this is fucking crazy, because it is. It's just gibberish. It's just fucking crazy ass shit. And they they <laughs> yes. literally throw you all the rules, and you got to learn all the rules. And they take, then you get take it to fucking test. And I'm like, dude, I could do this once a month. This is fucking fun as hell. Really? Like, you're give me all this fucking weird ass bullshit. Yeah. Doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean a thing. And then you're gonna test me on it for like a fucking hour. <laughs> you like 15 minutes, and there's like an hour long test. I'm like, how the fuck are you supposed to learn this language? Wow. And yeah. But it's super fun, and uh, it's one of those things where you talk to somebody else who's done it, and they're like, oh, fuck, a D-Lab. I'm like, dude, I had a great time. This shit was awesome. It was, it was amazing, really and then it, yeah. it wasn't until many years later until I went to grad school and started studying you know, methodology and all those sorts of things. of language. I was like, oh, fuck, of course. Of course the American government knows how to administer a test to figure yeah. out if you can. That's but crazy. I, I got sidetracked, but what I was going to say was um, what I love about black rooms and i found this man is that people who have pain in their past so if you asked me right now the, in the five years i've been out the worst i've ever bombed or the sh I, like the shittiest i've ever done is fucking orange county orange county california really where you've got rich white kids i can see that that was the worst night of my life and there's I no black people the there's no mex line. there's no black people there's no mexicans and because they don't know any jokes that you're telling about people that everyone if you've ever known a mexican dude this joke's fucking funny they're offended because they don't even have the point of reference of knowing any people of color to even know that clearly that's a you know i'm talking about a mexican dude in a lowrider with burritos like how do you not and they're just like yeah yeah right 
Um, is so, there anybody that's funny in Orange County? Is that though? something on the stock and it's because, market? It's, it's because yeah. it's people. That's why I love Jews and Mexicans and black people, man. Because if you got some horror in your past, so the thing about black rooms is, yes, the hecklers are brutal, but you can go places with a black room that you can't go with a white room. Because, and it's... Because they, I mean, it's obviously, it's a different life experience. It's a different life experience, man. Yeah. They know, and I, I do a bit about it. I'm like, that's why, that's why y'all don't fucking march every other day like we do. You save <laughs> your marches because you know when they're needed. We come to you over Starbucks cups, and black people are like, yeah, nah, like I like it on Facebook, but we ain't marching. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> right? I know here in every three to five years in America, something's going to come up. We really need this motherfucker. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's yeah. crazy. You never Dude. think about like just the, the room and how much that guides. But I mean, that's what Rogan said in Idaho. He was talking about how each city is so much different. Jokes he can pull in like the Midwest are yes. not jokes he can pull in California because he's got to be like, all right, everybody, this is a joke. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And what I like about him, man, um, I'll be honest, I didn't, when I moved out here, I'd never seen a stand up really. I wasn't, I didn't know a lot about him other than news radio. Um, he's a not only is he a monster stand up comic, he's an incredible elder statesman for the craft because he yeah. has so much money and could be so lazy. He doesn't have to go to fucking Iowa. He does it because back in the day, what you would do is you would you you'd go to the comedy store or something in L.A. You'd get your twenty minutes down, and then you take that on the road across America. And of that twenty, you would only keep what works everywhere. If you want to write a really fucking good Jesus joke. Have one that crushes with the Jews in Miami and Middle America and Mormons and everywhere. Right. You throw everything else out. That's what that dude does. Like he still say, stays true to that old school model of I want to crush everywhere. I don't want to be this kind of comic or this kind of comic. Yeah, I, I, I'm. You were a stand-up guy, but like, I, I when I look at that just form of entertainment, fuck, man, I, I hate it personally. I can be in front of a camera all day. I can act that kind of shit, but it's standing up and reading a room and then just having like the confidence to to work through it. Fuck that. Here's where it, yeah, and then here's where it ended for me is like once I started doing movies, there was a I had a bunch of friends who were still going back and forth, right? So if they weren't shooting there, they'd go back and do stand up. But those the nights where there's only thirty people in there, I couldn't get up for it anymore. And yeah. so I started to turn on the audience yep. and just do weird shit yeah. that was only appealing to me. Very common. Very and, and, and I was just like, how much can I fuck with the crowd? Like the Darnell Dawkins Mouth Guitar Legend movie was based out of uh, there was I think it was twenty five people in a club, and I had I had five minutes left in this set, and I was like, fuck all these people, fuck this shit. Yeah, here's the Star Spangled Banner with my mouth, and then yeah. I did, <laughs> and it was like, but for five <laughs> fucking minutes straight, I burned. <laughs> Five minutes just doing that. And you know, man, if you just did one run, it wouldn't be that funny. But after about the third time, people, that's exactly would, what happened. people so like, got the joke. They're like, this dude's out of his mind. So after like the second minute, it was like five people who got it. And they were like, oh, my God, this, this kid doesn't give a fuck, right? The third minute, like there was a couple people that walked out. The fourth and fifth, there was like 10 people who stood up and clapped. <laughs> And I got out of the parking lot, and I was just like, dude, what am, what am I doing? Like, yeah. If I'm just telling jokes for myself at this point, you have to really love it. Like Chappelle and those guys would come in to like the comedy store, like Tim Cook. I know he gets shit on a lot, but like, dude, if there was thirty or forty people in there, they would fucking still do two hours. Yes, just to do it. And I'm like, man, how do you get up for that? Like Rogan really gets up for that yeah. shit, where you're just like, there's nobody there, and that you still want to. Tr crush and destroy and do yeah. all this shit. What's the comedy store like? The layout, like how many people are typically there? Like, you know, I'll tell you, man. Um, I started producing shows there about two years ago, and the main room, which is the four hundred seater, had been dark for. And this this all goes back to Rogan, man. And not to turn this into a fucking Rogan dick suck. No, but which it, probably you know, happens we've been a lot. But of that people, online, a yeah, people you know what, man? Because yeah, motherfuckers yeah. don't understand the level of that dude's greatness. Yes, I don't listen to his podcast. I'm not his homie. I've just in LA in the comedy scene seen up front repeatedly what the fuck this guy does. And he is the fucking dude in LA. Make yes. no mistake about it. Yep. It ain't CNN anymore. It ain't Johnny Carson. It ain't Oprah. Joe Rogan is the epitome of what media is. And it used to be for a comic, you get on Johnny Carson, you're set for the rest of your life. Now, nobody gives a fuck about some split screen screaming match on. Some bias new be like, man, I want to go on Rogan shit. I want to talk for three hours like yeah. an adult. I want to have a drink. I want to smoke a joint. I want to take a piss. I want to have a nuanced conversation. Um, and um, 
but just yeah, watching watching a guy like that, man. I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, no, no, no. no. I, was, I was talking about the store because I've heard so oh, much yeah, about yeah, yeah. this forever. Yes. Yeah, and it blew, you worked there, so it's, it's not. It's not that's very the one big. owned by Paul oh, Shore, it right? It's, it's well, there's three rooms. Yes. Okay. So um, it's. You have the main room, which the comedy is probably store two, about two years ago. This is Polly Shore's place, right? Yeah, yeah well, it's Mitzi mom's Shore, place, yeah. Mitzi. Yeah. yeah, about two years ago, the fucking comedy store exploded like an atom bomb because of Rogan. Not only Rogan's podcast, but all those guys who sort of spun off and became, you know, like the Burt Kreischers, the Tom Segura's. Yeah. All these guys were constantly suddenly talking about the comedy store right. and that all that additional. So the main room is a four hundred seater, right? Which is now sold out. They've added two shows now. Every single fucking night, the comedy Seriously? store. There's a line yeah. every single night, and now two weeks out, you can't get tickets. It, but so, it's, it's only wow. because of those guys. Yes. So it's it is. it's all it's like a tree of Rogan is what I call it, right? So Joe, because he loves it so much, loves fucking stand up so yeah, much. Yeah, he does. He was the one who was like, I want to do the comedy store because that was. That was like Jim Carrey. That was everybody back in well, the day. Well, they, they, they fucked him. They thought they could buffalo him with that Carlos Mencia shit. Right. That's what started it. Is, but it actually blew him up. What do you mean? What they thought they could buffalo him with the Carlos Mencia? Well, it Mencia backfired. So what happened was is at the time, Carlos Mencia was an arena act because of that show yeah. he had. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone the loved Mind him. of Mencia. You remember and that show? Is, yeah. Mind I of Mencia. I hated that guy anyway. I hated, it never liked him right from the get-go. It's neither here nor there. Um, and again, this is all public knowledge. I'm not saying anything new. Um, but... Rogan was going, hey man, this guy's stealing everybody's jokes. Turns out he was, makes a whole scene. Uh, Rogan's, Rogan did, had, did he stand up in the audience? Yeah, in, oh, oh, no, no, no. He, he got on stage. Oh, he got yeah, on stage. Dude, you can't tell me, motherfucker, you're not yeah. stealing people's jokes. I mean, it and was the most, every comedian. It was the there. most egregious and, that and, anyone and had ever seen. The crowd was with him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever seen this? And he, he ended up choking him out. Like, oh, yeah. That was really? a stage a fight. Yes. And what? so, but, but here's, so here's the other crazy part about this. This is all, you can watch this. Yeah, yeah, you can watch it online. But here's the other crazy part about this is, Joe Rogan was the Fear Factor guy, right? That's so how I knew him. He was on everybody. Fear Factor. Yeah. So after this Mencia thing happened, and they were like choking him out, they were like, "Yo, why didn't anybody stop him?" And they were then that's when it got out. He was in a mixed martial arts and was like a five degree black belt and all that other shit. And you were like, "Oh fuck!" Well, I didn't know that. So it backfired in the way of it made Joe Rogan really fucking cool. And you were like, all right, shit. Not only was he calling yeah. people out, but now he's choking oh, people out. He's the only one that stood up to Carlos Mencia true. back then. Yeah, because said, Carlos, hey, Carlos you're had being so much ju- fuck. Because yeah, so much. So he had so yeah. Because mu- Carlos had so much juice at the time. He was the he's next, on TV. He's, he's on TV. Show, he's, he's the Mexican. He's the hot Mexican so comic no dude, dude. Nobody back then would got fucking it. say okay. shit. So so Rogan. Not only did the comedy store ban him, but his management company fired him. Yes. So all these yeah. And kept kept Carlos Mencia, and then flip flop a year later, Carlos is at the fucking Louisville Funny Bone for five hundred bucks a week, and fucking on a Rogan Tuesday exploded, yeah, and all those people, and so literally that he, was he had a perfect storm at once, like with the podcast, his stand up, and then UFC started getting big, and yeah. he, he was the announcer for UFC. Yeah, he's John Madden of the next greatest yeah, sport yeah. of all time. It was the perfect storm right. for his career at the same time, and it was like, all right, cool, but meanwhile. Comics, comics like like him, you guys had already loved him, so it was it was nothing yeah. new to you guys. It was just new to the rest of America. It, well, I'll be honest, man. Until five years ago, it was completely new to me. I mean, I did not. He was just for whatever reason, he just wasn't on my radar, man. Right. And the first time I saw him, he was doing rooms that he didn't have to do. He was doing them because he wanted to get better. Yeah. So I'd see him at like the parlor on a Tuesday, or you know, doing a bar show, or doing the the belly room. When there's ten people in there, like I was like, this dude really gives a fuck about getting better. He's doing rooms he does not have to do. Sure. And unlike like you and me and certain guys who didn't have the the, the discipline, who would just snap, he would never take it. He would never break. He just knew like this is part of the deal. Like I'm working on my new hour, and I I. Yeah, my my other thing was I was tired of getting bumped, and I'm sure this has happened to you a million times. Hey, man, that's why I started Operation Comedy. It's not I don't you know it's not just because I love the troops. It's because I was 35 when I got into stand up, went to one open mic and was like, "Fuck this! <laughs> this is really? not the way." Yeah, yeah. I was just you like, because you, you get bumped by fam- more famous people, and it's not like like yeah. I remember getting bumped by like Andrew Dice Clay, but it wasn't when Andrew Dice Clay was popular. It was right. about five years after, you know, Ford Fairlane and all that shit. Yeah. And you were like, dude, I'm I'm behind a guy who's still 
telling the same jokes. I could eat the corn out of a shit. And like tourists were just going crap. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you, dude. Uh, but he would do, he would come in and do an hour and a half. Yeah. So like Chappelle and Dane, Dane Cook would come in and do that too. Chappelle, he did a six, a six hour show one time. Yeah. He, he, he walked into the comedy store and just said, fuck everybody, I'm doing six hours. The difference though is that and this is a well-known thing, that guys like Dane and certain people use that as a specific target against certain people. Like, he would literally call up the club and go, text me the lineup, and he'd see somebody he didn't like. Yep. And he'd go in specifically that night on that day to fuck that dude's headlining set and just yep. do an hour. Chappelle is indiscriminate. He's going to come in and do whatever the in fuck any city, he wants. Anywhere, and he's going to kill. Anywhere, yeah. anytime, anywhere. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. got that level of fucking myth. He's great though. We watched the Chappelle show live, and uh, he's, it was amazing. Dude, he's, he's, he's fucking. With him. He was the coolest dude ever. Like it was fucking fun. Yeah, he fucking drink beers with us for an hour. Yeah, like, yeah. He's a. It, it, is he your top guy? You think he's the he's the best in the game right now? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I got here's my. I'll, I'll go first. I, okay. I got him at one. I got Bill Burr at two. Yeah. Um. You know. I. Let me see how I say this. I mean, to me, the the greatest special of all time, it's not for debate. It's almost like Jimi Hendrix and Voodoo Child. I mean, it's Richard Pryor in Long Beach. I think pretty much anyone will say that. But Dave Chappelle's For What It's Worth, which he filmed about 10 years ago, right? Yeah, is is beyond anything. I mean, Richard Pryor's always going to be Pryor, but when I watch that special, in my, in my heart of hearts, I'm like, this is the funniest shit of all time. It depends on your era. Mine was Martin Lawrence, You So Crazy. Oh, dude, dude. The most underrated, forgotten about. Yes. That when that motherfucker dude, I saw an interview with Chris Rock recently, and they he was recounting the hardest fucking people he'd ever had to follow, and he had two. Chris Rock in his whole fucking forty years, he said I had to follow on New Year's Eve. I had to follow Cedric the Entertainer in Oakland. Oh, good luck. And he said, and I had to follow. <laughs> and he said, I, and I had to follow, follow Martin Lawrence. Dude, Martin 90, Lawrence, you're 90, so crazy, was yes. just... You remember that bit he had about fucking dude when I was in college? And, and fucking his buddy? Oh. When, when a buddy, he's smoking weed with his, yeah. with, with his so buddy. Yeah, so you always had that good hair. Yeah, you, you always had that good <laughs> hair. Indian hair. Like, Man, can I, can I just fuck you? And yeah. it's his buddy. Just keep getting high with him the whole time. And as they keep smoking more weed and getting higher and higher, his buddy's Can I suck like, your dick? Can I just suck your dick, man? I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, dude, you're fucking high, man. He's like, no, nah, you don't understand, like... I think I should suck your dick. Like it's shit we talk about all the time. But Martin Lawrence was doing it ninety eight or whatever the Martin fuck Lawrence it was. Had, Martin Lawrence had that bit about crazy women and crazy men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who walk the guy who freaks out, he breaks they break up and you know, and she goes on puts puts on her fuck me pumps and she's like, Fuck him girl, fuck him, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck him girl. Not thinking this motherfucker's crazy. Ten minutes late, guess who walk in the club and they motherfucking pajamas with a gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said to the bouncer, not There's now. So many, you can go through that so whole many. hour and yes. a half. And yes. it destroys. Yes. Um, but that that to me is is my all time favorite. I know everybody says prior, but that yeah. that one's my personal favorite. But it, I, it's probably just an age gap, you yeah. know, where it was like, all right, cool. I to me, I like precision, and I like that old school no fat, where your everything with your act is just no fat, no fat, nothing but joke. That Rodney Dangerfield, where we'd never seen somebody distill comedy down to not a single extraneous word not one you could transcribe his shit and be like there's literally not even a fucking adjective there, there's not an article you could take out and the joke still works so bill burr's precision to me is n unlike anything i've ever seen and i've worked with him a ton over the last couple of years i've got to see it up close yeah i mean he he's fucking mind-blowing man he really is he's, he's just a genuinely funny dude in real life like yes. I, i've seen some of his videos did you see where he was at the rose bowl yeah. And that guy stood up in front of him and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And, and, but it was not a bit, not not anything. He was just sitting in the crowd. And he was like, why is there always one fucking person <laughs> at a game that just stands up the whole goddamn time? And it, the guy's standing up right in front of him. He doesn't know he's on camera. And then he catches it at the end on that guy's iPhone. And he goes, oh, fuck, were you recording this? True. Yeah. And I was like, I, that guy's just hilarious all i mean all, all the time yeah and i know this sounds weird man but he's kind of a sage dude he's actually pretty wise and in fact uh in a bit of serendipity at school shooter boy i talked to him after our, your your show the guy who i was fucking with in the crowd when i was closing and he came up and he's like you work with bill burr and i'm like yeah he's done a couple operation comedy shows I was like yeah i kind of know him and he goes uh he goes you know i used to do stand-up and i met him in boston like 20 years ago 
And even he was just, make a long story a little bit longer, he basically asked Bill for advice. And I was like, what would he say? And I swear to God, the dude goes, he told me, he goes, write down five minutes you think is funny and get up. And if people laugh, keep telling jokes. And if they don't laugh, keep telling fucking jokes and just walked away. You talk about some no fat, dope, bump, <laughs> like that's, yeah. that is succinct to the fucking point, not a wasted word. So you could almost like 20 years ago, that ginger fuck, same duty as now, just... That's yeah. great. I think he's the best I've ever, I've ever, ever seen. Yeah, I, look, those, those are the top two for me. Uh, what do you think about Louis C.K.? Um, you know, and this is pre, I, pre jacking off on people. No, that doesn't affect anything about what I think of an artist, man. I mean, it's like D.L. Hughley said when they're like, "How do you square watching the Cosby Show?" He's like, "Doctor Huxwell didn't rape nobody." That's very true. Like, I'm sorry if you're too stupid to have a nuanced conversation with your kid about the difference between an art, an artist's art, and the person. Um, so it really yeah, didn't. Michael Jackson. Wait. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah, we were yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, he did. Totally. Yeah, he did. No, no, no. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a great point, yeah. man. Like, if you're gonna fuck kids, you have to be undeniable. You cannot yeah. write Return of the Mac. You got to write Thriller. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, you got to be. You change an entire generation. Yes. Like format of their music. Yes. We can still listen to your music. I mean, yeah. you, you, yeah. Now, you fuck kids. You're a piece of shit. You should fucking rot in hell. Totally. But I'm still going to listen to Thriller when it comes on the radio. I mean, do you remember? I, I'm still going to listen to it. Yeah. We were, uh, we were out in uh, Utah with Jack and Ozzy Osbourne, and Ozzy was telling us about how they got kind of trumped uh, when their record was getting cut when Thriller came out, because he was telling us that every factory that cut records. Yeah. Was cutting thriller records for six, seven months. This dude's bumping you Ozzy get, you Osbourne. You couldn't yeah. get your fucking At record a level out. that he's like, you could get fucking record cut. Bought the, every fucking every fucking cutting yeah. place was just cutting thriller records. That's, Bought the that's rights. A great to Ozzy the, impression, by the way. Great, yeah, it's it is really actually, good. It's actually it's really good. I think they're just hammered. It no, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, hey man, no, I good. didn't know. I didn't know you could. And I didn't know you could fucking sing and play piano like you do. I didn't. I, can yeah. I? Listen, man. Yeah. Like just the You're same. You're really as, good. Listen, you listen, man. Just the same as when I started doing stand up in Spanish. I'm the only white dude in the country that can do that. When I walked in, there were a bunch of people standing, and my first thought was panic because I thought, oh fuck, why is somebody doing karaoke? I was like, did some fucking one of our Korea guys who's nuts get up and just go fuck it? <laughs> So back, hold on, back to the comedies, the, the comedians, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. Hedbert. Uh, yeah, Mitch. The best. Hold on. Like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dispute this. I'm going to dispute it openly right now, which is I think he is idolized because he's dead. And I'm just going to say it. He was great, but I don't think that he, he owns, like, the greatest of all time. I 100% agree with that. I do, I, I do not agree with that because I've heard it multiple times. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Back the fucking train up, dude. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have yeah. enough he doesn't, to, uh, to hold but that. But the thing that is, is like, there, I've know. heard this by a lot of fucking people. I've heard it, like Hedberg, Hedberg. I'm like, fuck, man. Dude, he, he doesn't even fucking line up, man. Like, prior, he's not even on the same fucking list. No. He's but, not even in the but top this 10. Is, this is what I find so fascinating about comedy, man. And everything I've done in my life, eventually within three to five years, I lost interest in it. Teaching, sales, whatever. Right. I've been in comedy 10 years now. I find it fucking fascinating. Because if you like rock and roll... You get five friends together, five good friends. Right. Like, if I asked you four, if you like rock and roll, you pretty much like Led Zeppelin, Alice in Chains. Like, you're pretty much across the board rock and roll. What makes people laugh is so fucking unique and different. Seinfeld, man, I don't get it. And I, Family Guy, there's shit where I've tried again and again, where I'm literally just being like, because I know I'm the issue. Because right. everyone I know that I respect says this show's the greatest thing ever. Right. Um, so, but I'm with you, man. I watch Hedberg and I'm just like, and then watch prior, but there's certain people that it's look. It's it's a subjective art it form. It sure is, but I. Think but I'm, I'm I'm with you in this, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, no, I, no, it I sure think is. But Hedberg didn't thank have him. that much of a run. What are you talking? Five years? Well, that's the other thing is yes. you could clearly see the beginning of somebody. And he who, had his a unique with 20 style. more years would no have been. No one's ever yeah. tried. I think, I think yeah. it's like a Kurt Cobain type of fact. Yes, yeah, I fair. think it's a Kurt Cobain type of fact, which is go out on top. Yeah, it's like, hey man, I'm going out. I'm 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 going to own this spot. And it's like Cobain wasn't a good musician. He really wasn't. Like no, my his, his, the basis of, of that start, band, yeah, grunge and grunge. The basis of that band was, is a good friend of mine. The guy was a fucking musician. Asshole. Listen he was, to what he's saying. Have you, ever read, have you ever, have you ever look, visually looked at the lyrics? It smells like Teen Spirit. And listen, you're like what? The this is smells fuck? like Teen Spirit was like could have been written by a fucking ten year old. Yeah. This is what I know though. 
of my entire life, and my bands are Tool, Rush, Zeppelin, Metallica, and my entire life, for whatever reason, I remember the day, the time of that song, seeing yes. it on MTV for the first time, and it shifted my... I mean, I'm not making that up, man. Something same, about... I, I, I do, but, but and I, I agree watched those with, cheerleaders with you, yeah. And the cheerleaders with the anarchy yeah, dancing yeah. and at, at that grunge, that perfect time at 16-year-old me was just like, yeah. But it was what because the? it was different. It hit at the right time. You were just at the end of yes. hair bands. Oh, like, God. And hate I, like, like I couldn't do, was going couldn't do down. any more Faster Pussycat. I'm going to shoot yes. up a bed back and And then it was Nirvana, Pearl Jam, all that shit. I love the fact like he, this is what I like, man. He's from Aberdeen, like out in the middle of fucking nowhere, Washington. It was a bunch of fucking poor kids that fucking Aberdeen, literally I love that. You used to came, play paintball there. What's that? I used to play paintball. Yeah, in man. Aberdeen. Like they came out of the fucking garage. It's like they built that shit totally on their on their own accord, playing fucking playing in the Seattle area. It wasn't like they were caught up in the fucking shit. It was like no, they established the template. And leaders. brought America they fucking to fucking Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, if, you, if you're lining that that's that whole circuit up, I got Pearl Jam at one during that era over sure, them. But I would say this, which is Pearl Jam moved from California to Seattle because of the fucking music. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They brought the entire yeah. scene. You guys just it. digressed from arguing comedians and just comparing them to a band and now arguing bands. That's why I like yeah, this yeah, show. Yeah. I'll tell you this, <laughs> though. That's why I like this show. Yeah. I'll, tell you, yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this, though, man. Um, have you ever seen Pearl Jam live? Yes. Okay, yes. I had not until 10 years ago. I went to see him in New Zealand. In Australia, I saw three shows. The girl I went with was a Pearl Jam fanatic and was following him. How long? How long did they play? Oh, dude, like three hours. And I, I, and, one of the, I went and, once. It was four hours. And I listened to four ten. Fucking hours. I listened to ten, like everyone in the '90s. And the second one, animal, you know, with Animal and Daughter, yeah, yeah, I kind of yeah. listened, but I hadn't really, you know, yeah, I just kind of listened to a song every now and again. I'd never seen them live. They are fucking amazing. amazing. Oh, they're incredible. They are an amazing. arena yeah. act. Killing. I've seen him in Boise. I've seen him in Missoula. They I've are. Seen him at they're they're one of my all time. One of the best yep. live yep. shows yep. I've oh, ever dude. fucking seen, dude. I mean, that yep. guy, they murder. Dude, if, and if he's Soundgarden drinking. fucking live blew my mind. I wasn't yeah. even on, I wasn't uh. on drugs. It was like a, sober. It was in the gorge in Washington, which is the gorge is fucking incredible if you've ever been there. It yeah. overlooks this fucking river valley. And I'm not like I'm not exaggerating this shit, but like Chris Cornell came out and the wind was just right, and he opened up just fucking wailing, and he like opens his shirt up and the wind's fucking carrying it around. I'm sitting there going, I should be on drugs. Yeah. Am I on drugs? Yeah. I don't know, but this shit is fucking insane good. <laughs> yeah, for it was crazy. Re- and for whatever reason, man, I'm 45. I've seen a lot of people come and go, but for some reason, the back to back of Cornell and Tom Petty, man, I was just. I was fucking actually bummed, like real bummed, man. Like for a couple of days, I was just listening to all this shit. Cause I think like a hundred years from now, if you're playing fucking Skid Row at a light with your windows down, you're going to get laughed at. Like yeah. it, I'd still like it, but what a yeah. Chris Cornell shit is literally timeless. I mean, that guy, the, the, the way he wrote his lyrics, that voice, that guy is so fucking one in a million. Him and Lane Staley both are my guys. Fuck yeah. Those so two little dudes. known fact, a good, a good friend of mine was the bassist for Nirvana and Soundgarden, and then he became a Green Beret. His name is Jason serious? Everman. Jason yeah. Everman. Jason Everman. I didn't know and that. No yeah, yeah. shit? Yeah, yeah. Silence the Light is the band that he's in now with a bunch of former soft guys, former Delta Force dude, a bunch of these other dudes. How am I just hearing of this? Dude, you the know? guy's fucking no. epic, man. He's like a fucking epic character in american history like music history and history. you should get him on the fucking show ah, it's, it's hard to it's hard to pin down <laughs> yeah. he does other things now he's that's, a, uh yeah he's cruising around the world yeah and stuff what, what, what you want to elaborate what no, they, what no he's, he's, he's in a no, band he's bet. like he's down in chile like trying to <laughs> no. be a, he's, he's like down the best in chile thing i've ever heard on fucking, the least word spoken yeah, ever on, on the that one or, today. no hey, we don't actually hey, you know what we can't talk about it. That's this what Ooh. it is. Yeah, and you know what? Good for hey, you guys. I like that answer better. Hey, we'll, yeah, delete, yeah, yeah. we'll delete that piece. We can't talk good about for you it. Guys we'll for it keeping it. We'll hey, keep good for you guys for keeping it old school. It's fucking some shit stays in the locker room. Yeah, man. that's great. I, but I didn't know what it was. And I thought it was a game of like, oh, hey, no, no, we're no, just no, not no, telling no. you. I, I knew when he said, nope. I was like, I am moving on. <laughs> I'm so talking about it. there, man. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Epic Silence of Lights. Exactly. fucking band. It's epic. Like, the guys are fucking rad. Audio Slave. Fucking insanity, dude. One of the yeah. that band, unbelievable, man. Yeah. I mean, I was really bummed when that guy went, man. I was like, we really lost 
an actual artist instead of just one of these singers or whatever, man. That guy was fucking transcendent. It's I like Murder in My Mind. We're still going to be playing that in 30 years, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? That's it's iconic. Yeah. You don't just murder somebody and then get caught. Well, I, he did just bring up a pretty good point that I don't think I've ever thought about until now is we're in this age... If we don't face some crazy nuclear fucking holocaust at some point, all this media will be available a hundred years from now. Yeah, and that's weird because we can't go and get. I mean, you can you can get a rough song of maybe some classical stuff or something a hundred two hundred years ago right now. Right, but. But think of the catalog a hundred years from now. Yeah, but that I, you have to choose from. Here's what, here's, and then what builds in a hundred yeah, years, years ago, with you, the yeah. mu- music? I when, think I think music lives. I don't know if movies do because uh, I don't go back and watch old shit from like the forties and fifties, like movie wise. Some I've gone do. back as some far as do, yeah. right? But like some people learned to fucking yeah, but watch some Charlie, Charlie Chaplin, Chaplin, bro. I don't know, hundred percent. But I, Cheers. I just I can't get down on it. And like a lot of those old school movies are like Bogart, and like I'll get m- crushed for this actor wise. But like that style of acting was so stilted and fake, and you could see the marks on the thing and the way they talk to people. Was I just don't like, understand why they. I can't go back and watch either. it. I can't either. Um, and but music lasts forever. Like I mean, shit. I, like Charlie no Chaplin's reason. different though, because like. That, no, I, 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 right? I get it. Like, I get that's the whole, different. I get the whole Charlie Chaplin thing. It's just not my personal. No, but like the Humphrey Bogart and that. Bullshit. I don't like Mr. Bean I, I either, and that's Jared's yeah, but favorite move movie. Move it forward, though. Like, will movies from, you know, 95 and on, Independence Day and things like that, will those live 100 years? I now? think Tarantino's yeah. movies will. Yep. The rest of them are being remade at such a rapid pace. Right. And when I talk to people about movies, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, like the remake. Like Point Break. We had this conversation about Point Break because I'm doing this fucking thing for Swayze and his hair. And I, I said to, to somebody, hey, man, I'm doing this thing for Point Break. And they were like, oh, shit, man. I saw that in the movie theaters. And I was like, hey, me too. And they were like, "Like it was like a year and a half ago it came out, right? And I was like, I had to think about it. And I was like, oh, yeah. fuck, they, they remade Point remake? Break. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. And so, Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. Yeah, so th- there's a whole generation of kids that are coming up that only Don't know the remakes. Yeah, like Aladdin's <laughs> coming out. Aladdin's <laughs> coming out. Lion King. They're not going to know the original oh, anymore right. because these are going to dominate now. Right. And it's like, all right, well, why would I go back and rewatch the first one? Yeah, but that becomes a pretty cool thing. Like if you if you think you watch an old movie and then realize that it was a remake from twenty, it's like, whoa! I want to I want to see that now. But kind of like going back to what Evan was saying about Kurt Cobain. Analogous to that would be like, I love westerns, but when I watch John Wayne, I'm like, this is the cheese dickest, cheese most awful, dick ridiculous. Shit. And not 10 years later, Clint Eastwood, everything that motherfucker has ever done with a six shooter, I am in Dude. awe of. I still watch. It yeah. still holds yeah. up. Yep. It still is absolutely the outlaw Josie Wales. Yeah. At 12 when I saw it to 45 when I see it is just Dude, flawless. I'm a Green Beret. Yeah. Right? I'm a Green Beret, and I was force fed fucking Green Beret propaganda my adult life. I'll tell you right now, if you told me John Wayne or Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood any day of the week. Any day of the week, Any fucking day of the week. The original Ridiculous Six was fucking awesome. Oh, dude. It was was amazing. I wish they didn't remake it because after I had seen that the first time, I always had this this fucking want to remake that movie with a soft team that act accidentally found themselves back in time in that area like yeah. doing the same thing totally because it was such a cool concept oh yeah. wait you know these six fucking gunfighters stumble into a town that needs help defending themselves yeah Let's fuck some shit up clint eastwood is is like he's an actor yeah like, yes he's an actor and, and john and, wayne yeah, yeah. It's, but it's the way they talked too so like the way clint eastwood talked to people like hey i'm gonna fucking Dude. kill you I believe it was going to kill me. Yeah. With John Wayne, it was, is this a dagger I see before yeah, this shit? me? Get what? the fuck out of here, man. What the fuck? Man? What the fuck, <laughs> fuck out of here Are with you that serious? You're like shit. fat, old as fuck. You're not going like to fucking totally, invade. Dude. You're, you're not going to take a hatchet force <laughs> over the hill or like Cambodia. You're fucking fat as fuck, motherfucker. Get the fuck out of here. Exactly. You're a colonel. You're going to lead a hatchet force? You look really <laughs> clean. <laughs> you just you just invaded Africa in a tank, and you're really fucking clean. <laughs> clean like, you go back and should walk into this room today. Dude, you go back. Uh-huh. You, go, you go back and watch uh-huh. High Plains. You will go back and watch High Plains Drifter, man. Within Dude. the first two minutes, Clint Eastwood has shot four people and raped a woman who enjoyed it so much that she came. 
if you go back and watch that, he full on rapes that woman, or his, I'm sorry, his character does. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, and literally, character. they wrote it to where the, the, the gunslinger was such a dope pimp that she wound up loving it. Like, that was, that, that's insanity, dude. You right. could never even get away with even thinking of it's so liberating to be able to watch that shit where you're just like, man, that was a time when you could just fucking, like, art was just art, man. If a statue had titties, it was a statue. It doesn't what was, matter. It, what, was that, what was that uh, Clint Eastwood? It was like a series of movies that he did with the ape. What was that? Oh, any which oh, way, uh, any which way, yeah. 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 Those hold yeah. up, dude. dude. Those hold up. Red Hook, Clyde, yes. and then the fucking those monkey yes. would knock fucking somebody out. Yes, <laughs> epic, man. Jerry Lee or yes. Jerry, uh, your boy from uh, Eastbound and Down. Eastbound Fuck, and Down, dude. loaded up yeah. and yeah. The yeah. dude who yeah. drove that semi—that's the guy who sang that song, right, dude. <laughs> Jerry something. Fuck. Fuck, dude. Right Hook, Clyde, yes, and then the fucking right. monkey yeah. would knock him out, dude. So fucking good, man. Yeah, I mean, fucking, you know, there's certain things when you're fucking around on YouTube. YouTube, that you're always going to watch it 100% of the time. And those last six minutes of The Unforgiven are just some of the most tension-ridden, the most phenomenally... I mean, it's it's mind-blowing to watch, man, still. Yeah, I, and out of this generation, I think Tarantino's movies will always hold up, right? Uh, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction oh, and all dude. that shit, like Hateful Eight, Jesus. all of it. Yes. I think Christopher Nolan's Hateful Inception. You, are you on that? Love you Hateful like Eight. Eight. I, I'm a big fan of that. Um, I fucking fast. You didn't forward. like it. I, I fast forward through that shit like a, it was like twelve hours, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, but, yeah, but the, the whole 12, thing is, hours. is like, but he's like the, our the Cecil whole... B. DeMille man. I'm just always gonna support that guy because it. Pulp Fiction, my generation was just, yeah, but this the, guy's a fucking genius. The greatest thing about Tarantino was his ability to turn nothing but a conversation at a table into a fucking captivating scene. Yes! And yeah. Hateful like the tip Eight proves that. Yes. We don't leave yes. a fucking house and you're in a movie going, <laughs> oh, fuck. Totally! Yeah. <laughs> yes. I loved it. But So if you don't like long run times, they just announced it today. The Avengers, the new Avengers movie is clocking in. Three hours, in. two minutes. Three oh, hours, two minutes. For fuck's sake, how many more of these fucking comic books? 16. Jesus uh, Christ. 16. Uh, so, uh, no, that's uh, Angelina uh, Jolie just signed up for a Marvel movie tonight. Dude, but, what, that, those are the only movies being made in Hollywood. Dude, what I was going to say is, is you is, mentioned yeah. Aladdin and, uh, you know, you mentioned remakes. I was listening to Guy Ritchie. Who's my? It's Guy Ritchie and Tarantino are the guys that yeah. anything they make. Uh, I'm a Jared's Guy. guy. Ritchie, anything fucking... they make, I'm already on board. I'm going to see it. I'm going to pay money. I'm not going to pirate it. I want to support you. I like that guy. He was on Rogan's podcast. He's doing Aladdin. And yeah, you know yeah. why he's doing fucking Aladdin? Because no Rogan. Fucking listen, because it, it was. And what I love about listening to these podcasts, man, is you get inside baseball now. This used to be like knowledge that was kept in the, like the sanctum sanctorum. Now people know. And he goes, Yeah, you want to know the dirty secret about Hollywood? He goes, If it's not a fucking remake that they can point to. Because Rogan goes, What's your next English gangster film? And he goes, Because they, they were talking about what do you do? Uh, Beowulf or your ship, which your which, which fruity the Australia. Knights. The Knights. Yeah, uh, something like that. Your boy King Arthur. Loved it. King Arthur, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, yeah. the thing. Your, your like, boy from... I bought King Arthur just because it was the only new thing. And I hit play. I'm not paying attention to it. I'm on my phone or something. And I start hearing the movie going. And I'm like, wait wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Is this a Guy Ritchie movie? <laughs> totally. And all of a sudden, I look it up. Oh, fuck it is. And now I'm like into it. Like, Cause over the, and it oh. was all just because of the editing and the, and the fucking dialogue. I'm like... Yep. No fucking way! And but all it's those still movies, King he would lo Arthur, though, lock, like. stock, and smoking barrels, layer cake. All those movies, those guys from that Snatch. generation, snap, dude. Everyone, if you hold a gun to their head, they have their top three movies. The older I've gotten, because because anyone can do five, three is fucking hard. When you have to kill those last two babies, and I'm telling you, man, Snatch has consistently. St I, I could not live without that movie. The characters, the dialogue. So that's what Joe said. He's like, yo, when are you doing your next English gangster film? And he's like, uh, I'm doing Aladdin. And Joe's like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, I I'm doing Aladdin. Because you can't get money anymore in fucking Hollywood. Yeah. If you can't point, that's... Ugh. Will Smith is playing the fucking genie, obviously. And it's just uh, like... Oh, dude, is that real? I'm yeah. sorry, that was oh. Ralphing, not so I, like I would Will prefer Smith, but, Sinbad be the genie, of course. Like... You know, same because he's from yeah. Shazam. Yeah, 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 yeah which <laughs> right? doesn't exist. It absolutely. does. No. It absolutely, absolutely definitely does, does We're not absolutely exist. Absolutely the same age. Like, there's no. no he there said no Sinbad the genie. I'm like, there was a I don't Shazam. Need to ask. No. I, know, I know when you graduate from high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you went yeah. to prom, there's no like, Shazam, we're, we're about the man. same. Yeah, that's hilarious, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that, but that, you're right. That's that's all that's happening, and that that's all that's left. Comedy is a different story. Yeah, I mean, look. 
Pryor's yeah. been dead for a while. His shit still dude. holds. They replay that all the time. Live oh from the Sunset Strip dude. is on all the time. Oh. Um, and you know, Eddie that, Murphy's. And, dude, delirious. Carlin. Pryor, Carlin. All those guys, and they dude. still replay that. And I'm going to put Kennison on that list with yeah. uh, yes. Headbird. Yeah, yeah. Too. I'm so fucking okay. li- well, that's what I'm saying. There's a big fucking Total. line. Yeah. Man. It's a big line. Yeah. So when people throw out headbird, I'm like, yeah, well, come on, and, man. And the other thing is, like, <laughs> there's, there's, there's the people that came before you. There's people that, and you know, Ron White said this. I heard him say this. He said, there's, there's bridge builders and there's bridge walkers. And he goes, like, I'm a bridge walker. Everyone else had built these bridges. When you look at those guys, Carlin and Pryor, there was no long form comedy before them. They wrote they so when you factor that in, as much as I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I'm a Stevie Ray Vaughan fucking dude with a gun to my head to the I day that it. I die, I'm always gonna give Hendrix a little bit of a nod because he was fucking Hendrix. They, he was rewriting with a left-handed electric guitar, just doing shit that was and that's that's the thing about Pryor and Cosby and Carlin, man. Just so it's not just the material that holds it up. When you think of that, you know, comedy used to be like your boy in uh, Goodfellas. Or uh, you know the the oh wait no Scarface or Goodfellas you look at the comics in both of those and right. Scarface he's got the costume on he's the fucking dude yeah, with yeah. a lampshade on his head dirt 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 yeah hey I'm here take my wife that's what comedy used to be and in prior just introduced long form where it was just stories and storytelling yeah storytelling he's man. a big Stevie Ray Vaughan guy that's your dude oh that who, guy who do you is, got uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan versus Hendrix. I think it's the same point he was making. Steve Ray Vaughan, it's like as a guitar player, I'm far more interested in the music. I'm not a huge Hendrix fan, but Hendrix pretty much started rock yeah. blues. He was he's the trendsetter for all totally. of that. So And when you listen to like so I didn't discover Richard Pryor till I was out of high school. My parents were square, man. They were they didn't listen to any of that shit. So I loved Delirious and Raw. I mean, that yeah, was yeah. what we all knew. And yeah. then once you discover Richard Pryor, you go Oh fuck! That was all just Richard Pryor, and Eddie Murphy's yeah. been honest about it. Because yeah. what people don't understand is when he did Delirious, dude, he was nineteen fucking years old. Yeah, which is insane. You have no. There's a reason. There's no young. And this is why I think comedy is the hardest thing in the world. There are no successful young comics. Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses put together one of the most mind blowing albums of all time with Appetite Destruction in their 20s. Yeah. Zeppelin was putting shit out at 20, 21. As a comic, comedy's fucking hard, man. That guy was doing arenas yeah. at 19. So, of course, when people shit on Eddie Murphy's, they're like, yeah, the jokes don't hold up. It's like, well, he was a fucking child, man. Not only that, but like, dude, to, to your point about prior. Later on in his career, when he got the power, he ended up hiring Pryor for all of his shit. Yeah. And he said, this is the guy. Totally. This is the best. This is my fucking mentor. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was, you know, mm. stealing from her or anything. He was, no, he was no, saying, no, no, hey. No, 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 no. And, yeah. and he's on record saying, look, man, I was a kid. I didn't know what to do. I, you know, I, that's why he's always talking about taking his shit and whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, that guy is, uh, Jesus Christ. He'll be back. He's doing a, a biopic for Netflix right now. I don't think so, man. No, Eddie Murphy. Oh. They're, they're already, they're, they've already shot it. So he's going to do stand up again. No, he's not doing stand up again. Oh, uh, but he's doing, he's starring in a movie where I mean he, that guy gets more offers than you know for years and years and years. He just chooses not to do shit. I think the most seismic shockwave that has gone through comedy in the last probably since Delirious would be if Eddie Murphy came back. Arsenio Hall did a drop in at the store. I was at the Hollywood Improv. This is about a year and a half ago. I'll never forget this. A-list fucking comics everywhere. It's a Saturday night, so it's the best of the best. And literally something happened where you could see a ripple that looked like a fucking nuclear shockwave going through the room. Phones, people, this, that. Like, literally, you just watched the whole room, and it was because a rumor had just leaked that Eddie Murphy had come in with Arsenio Hall, and he was going to do five minutes. The, I mean, I've never... Did in the he do it? Huh? No. no, just no. the rumor set off what looked like. I mean, literally, you know those movies where the fucking atom yeah. bomb goes off? I mean, it, that's what it looked like. The room, it just went. <laughs> that's the level of juice that dude has. Man. So here's what I've heard. God, I hope he comes back. But no, he won't. I, here's what I've Fuck heard no, about Eddie not. Murphy. So they've all been up to his house, like everybody, Chappelle, Kevin Hart, all those guys have been up to his house. And I'm like, dude, you got to come back. And he's like, I can't. He's like, it's been too long. One, yep. two, I'm too famous. That people will laugh at shitty jokes. So if even if my shit sucks, they're still going to laugh. I'm not going to know it until the special airs. Right. And then then I put out a garbage special. Well, and why that, not walk off on a high note like Jordan and you know, yeah, well, like for Jordan sure. should have. Yeah. And then uh 
I, and I understand that. And he's talented as an actor, so he could keep starring in movies forever. Like, let all of that shit live where it used to live. Well, and, he's got to be close to sixty now, right? Where, where does he open mic? Like, the, going back nowhere. To- with the cam, with the cell phone cameras and everything he says being picked apart a thousand ways. I don't ways. know, man. Like, like, so, did you guys watch the comedian? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah. 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 Like, he didn't come back. I mean, that's not. That's actually not. Not. Not probably correct. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, he's still touring. He's still doing comedy. Like Seinfeld's still out there, fucking doing it, right? So it's like, hey, man, if you love doing something. And that's what you want to do. do it. Yeah. Just do it, right? Because you're rich. You don't give a fuck. But I don't you think don't, he loves it enough. But, yeah, but, he doesn't. He's like Barry that, Sanders. The, it's just why not walk away? Trying to make. Totally. Yes. He doesn't want to. Yeah, so what, man. What the fuck, man? Who cares? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, you don't want to. Great, dude. Like, you got Same. it. Couldn't agree more, do man. It. But yeah. if you want to come back, like, who gives a shit? That's, that's awesome. Go do what you want to do. Do as many shows as you want to do. Do them where you want to do them. Like, you can set your own fucking schedule. Make your own mark. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. And at the end of the day, the audience is going to go, oh, fuck yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's like he alluded to, man. The great thing about stand-up is it's the ultimate. So you watch this shit all the time at the store. You watch famous people come in all the time wanting to masquerade Dude. as a stand-up. That's going to buy you about two to three minutes up front. Your fame is going to buy you two to three yeah, minutes. There's a new one, like uh, yeah. Piven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't... Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't, God, I didn't, go ahead. I didn't, I, I didn't say nothing. I will I didn't, too. That's so hilarious. Though. Everybody that this went to his show, <laughs> Jerry Pippen, one hundred percent. He and I have never fuck? talked about yeah, this. Yeah, We've yeah. never. I no. it happens fucking, all the time. You know, a concept that I would love to fucking throw out is like, I think you should fucking pitch a show called Five Minutes, where you go get fucking dudes to just do five minutes of stand up, like random fucking dudes. And they go out to a fucking stage and do five a you five a minute fucking limit. set. <laughs> it's like big ball fucking badass fucking dudes and be like, hey man, why don't you do five minutes? But that's here, it. And that's what it's called. But here's why five the, minutes. Here's why that show would never work because people would think like it's gonna be there's gonna be hijinks and there's gonna be this. The first time you do stand up, you're lucky if you're not stumbling and uh uh or Half the people just freak the fuck out and bail mid. It's it's so like if you're talking about the first time someone does stand up. It I I still have the DVD of the first time I did stand up. I th- I threw up all over the parking lot. I I bombed so bad I threw up all over the parking lot. It's horrible. The stand up is hard as fuck. <laughs> and like, I'll, I'll never per- forget that feeling in my stomach. You never how forget how bad it, it was <sighs> throwing up in the parking. Yeah, I mean even now it. It's the yeah, worst. Dude. It's the so fucking were worst. You, were you a teacher? You were a teacher, yeah. right? Before that. Yeah. You, professor, teacher, yeah. right? Yeah. So did you have an unrealistic expectation based on the fact that you had been in front of a crowd speaking? Did you think that you were going to do okay? I'll tell you this, man. Um, I had taught for years. Um, I came from people who were in the academic field and lawyers. So I come yeah. from people who talk. And I come from a big Irish Catholic drunk family of storytellers. And like, not sound like a dick, man, but I've been one of the three or four funniest people in any room I've ever been in since I was four. I knew I could speak. I knew I was smart. I knew I traveled. I just knew that I knew I could do it. I had just baked in six months. I knew I didn't know how to write jokes or do it yet. But I was like, once I figured that out, because I was 35, man. Right. Once I, and, and within two months, it had clicked and I figured out how to write jokes and I was on the road and opening. Like it came like a duck to fucking water, man. Did you wish you would have started younger? No. In fact, I'm so glad I didn't. Because you lack material. Not only did I lack material, man. The other thing about stand up is nobody wants to be lectured by no fucking child on nothing. And stand up, you know, there's your happy go lucky, beboppy people. But at the end of the day, stand up is about one fucking dude who has the balls, who thinks he's so smart and so awesome that he's going to lecture everyone in a room. Without knowing shit about him on shit for an hour. You can't do that at 22. No one's going to fucking listen to that shit. Especially when you start getting into real world shit like divorce and politics and fucking the IRA. Real bankruptcy. Nobody wants to hear no child talk about that shit. Right. And I already... And like I came in, I was very calm, I was very humble. And because of that, a lot of the old school guys could tell I was serious. And the pros were pulling me aside and they were just like... Well, they wouldn't even bother with no 21-year-old. Because a 22-year-old kid... Is trying to fuck the waitresses and do. I was trying to get funny, man. I did not. I got in at thirty five. I'm like, I got to make up at least a decade. I got to figure out a way to fast track this shit. What's that? Uh, I, I apologize for this, but no. There's, there's a there's a show on HBO. 
uh, crashing. Crashing. There yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cancel. Just got canceled. Yeah. Did you get? Pete did Holmes. you watch that? Pete I, Holmes. I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you, it's funny, man. I I watched it and I was like, ah, eh, it's, it's all right. You know, like the series is okay. I was like, guys, yeah, he's funny. Like, but see, I, like that's and again to go back, you know who I don't think to me again, man. There's a difference between that's like sure. I, so I've produced shows forever and people ask me is so and so funny I'm like that's the wrong question the question is are they talented sure because everyone's gonna have a different opinion like I don't George Carlin doesn't do it for me there's no way I don't appreciate the linguistic brilliance of that man but when right. I watch it I'm just like this ain't my style but I'm gonna tell you right now I don't know that anyone has consistently made me laugh harder in my life than Bernie Mac. Bernie fucking Mac's Bernie Mac. That's a good right. Patrice That's O'Neal. Good. Patrice yeah. fucking O'Neal. I mean, I'm talking about people where I can't breathe when I'm listening because of the punch, punch, joke, punch, joke, punch, joke, right. punch. Just fuck. I like all the I like all the different styles. Like uh as a kid, I remember Stephen Wright. Yeah. I like those dry one liners. Dude, I remember one of his Stephen bits Wright was fucking great. on the Tonight Show yeah. where he said and he opened with it. He walked out and he goes, What happens if you're driving at the speed of light? And you turn your lights on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember I saw that joke when I was like eight, and I still remember it, man. Same. Like, uh, my right? mind for him was, uh, imagine if you took all the sponges out of the ocean, how much more water there'd be. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> one liner after one liner after one liner. But the other guy, man, like I will say this, like Larry David. Oh, dude. Yes, Larry underrated, David. under fucking rated, and ask <laughs> uh, ask ask the people that they call the comics comics. Like David Tell, and I don't know this personally, just this normal podcast, and people who know say that dude is the most underrated cat yes. to ever be in the game. <laughs> Seriously. Look, he, I, in my opinion, he's a genius. He's a, fuck, he's a fucking genius. He's, 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 his money he's shows genius. he's a fucking genius. I mean, he created yeah. Seinfeld. Oh, Larry David. I was thinking of, uh, God damn it. What's the, anyway, it doesn't. I, I love Curb and Curbian Enthusiasm. Curb Enthusiasm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like yeah. Seinfeld, I'm one of the only people I know, man. I don't get it at all. The TV never, show or the comedian? Mm, well, either one. Both, to be honest. So I like but, the TV show, his comedy. I don't like clean shit. Like, I'm not. Hey, what's the thing about the airlines? Yeah. Like, you gotta get I, milk. You got I can't no watch milk. His stand up. I can't either, show. dude. I thought the show was great. I love the writing and the way that it was connected and it was put together. Same, yeah. It, the sequencing in the writing was fucking incredible. It was great. To me. Never the way even they tied things together in the narrative. And see, that's what's so fascinating is two people who you can tell the number of things we just met, the number of things we have in common. But when it comes to funny, I watch Seinfeld and it never has even made the corners of my mouth turn, man. That's I'm crazy. just like, I don't that's get crazy my, to me. My Family Guy, same shit. I'm what, just so, like, so, what's your favorite comedic TV show then? Because that'll set the pace for uh, what you really I mean, did. Cheers still holds up. I can still go back and watch Cheers. Uh, 30 Rock. Parks and 30, 30, Rock's, 30 Rock's great. The, 30 the Rock's writing on that the most is insane, insane, amazing. Um, um, yeah. The best writing I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Parks and Rock is great. Office Parks and Rock is, is fucking yeah. great. The Office took me a while to get into because it's so awkward. Yeah. Even though you know it's like, but the brilliance of writing something that makes someone literally squirm as they're watching it and so, it's not horror. So the weird part of that for me was I started on the British Office because I was overseas. Same here. Oh, and see, so, yeah, yeah. I was watching the British office, so when the American version came out, I was like, this is fucking stupid. Uh, it, dude, and then I, I was like, it took me about a season to get into it. Same, because dude. I was like, I quit. Same. I, 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 I did. I quit I, for a year. I, I did, too. I had to go and back because of a girlfriend. Everybody kept telling me, because yes. I had watched the British one first. Yes. And they were like, dude, you watched the office? And I was like, yes. fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. Yes. And then finally, like season two, everybody kept hitting me up. I was like, fucking yep. fine. My I'll girlfriend watch it. got me into it. Same. The, and I was like, all right. I started watching. I was like, oh, the shit. British there are office. people that watch it fucking religiously. Dude. Like, like nine times Yeah, like times Star Wars. It's, 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 I, I went, will. If it's on, I'll I went on. back and watched the British office recently in the last year. Right? I just kept playing in the background. I'm like, holy fuck. This is incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking incredible. And I know now why. It took me a year for the American version to warm up because it was like, this is so over the top and so fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. That the American version felt like this is fucking watered down bullshit. Yes. What is this? Yeah. Like, I, I, I want to feel really fucking uncomfortable. Like, I want to have to pause this yes. and walk the fuck out of the room <laughs> because like, I am so fucking yes. uncomfortable. Even though you know you out. expect that because everyone yeah. warned yeah. you. It's still like, God, yeah, yeah. I got to pause this. This yeah. is absolutely this dude. Is fucking crazy. I need to. Like, that's what I want. And I was like, that's fucking American bullshit. Yeah. Did you listen yeah. to, uh, going back to Louie, did you listen to the Parkland bit? Did you listen to what I caused did. the whole thing? I, I did. thought it was hilarious, man. He had a point. He had a great yeah. point. Listen, it's like, look, dude, and, and this is what kills me. This is what kills me about 
stand-up comics. This is the brush with with we get with which we get tarred and feathered that other other artists know. Anytime we take on an idea or discuss something, suddenly we own it. It defines us. We're attached to it. But like when a when a when an actor decides to portray a rapist or a murderer or whatever degenerate, nobody goes, "Why did you make that choice? Like, why do you get a pass?" He was clearly open micing some new shit, man. Yeah, but dude. I can tell you right now, man, and I'm pretty liberal, and I some of my views would probably shock you. I don't give a fuck. I do not want a child lecturing me on anything ever. I don't give a fuck. I don't care what you've been through. You're a fucking infant. I'm a 70s, 80s kid. You didn't talk back in the day. Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry about the horror you went through, but motherfucker, every single day they were telling us to get under our desks because a nuclear holocaust was coming. Like, don't right. tell, you know, life's fucking hard. Nut up. So that's all he was saying was it was this great bit and some asshole leaked it. Yeah. And that one clip. That one clip. That selective clip. Uh, look, his rebuttal was really funny because some <laughs> yes. people were ooing and on and he goes, Fuck you! What are you gonna take away my birthday? My life is over. <laughs> right. I don't give yeah. a shit. And you're like, but oh. you, you know what I'm, you know what I'm, I'm chalking this up to, like why there's a difference between actors and comedians is because people have a lack, like just a general lack of imagination. Oh and my because God. of the Understand. digital age, understatement. Because the digital age. Jesus. They've been force fed imagery, right? Yeah. So, for instance, if you go to a play, people are bored as fuck. Like it's a fucking play. Because they don't have any imagination. Like I need, I need right. graphics. I need fucking like I need this Sound person effects, to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powers, Laser. Shit. Spoon feed me. Yeah. I am sheep. I'm a fucking lemming. <laughs> like just feed me. So if there's a person that's talking, the people that are offended are the fucking biggest morons in the fucking crowd, yeah. and they have no imagination or ability to think about what they're saying. So you're. We're concerned about the dumbest fucking people in the yep. crowd. Yep. Like, fuck you. You can yeah. go off on a fucking stupid island. We'll build a big fucking fence that says, welcome to stupid island, you dumb motherfucker. You have no imagination. This is where you live now. You can have wooden toys and we'll teach you imagination. Totally. <laughs> and you know, man, the, the, the very same people who hijack these conversations really don't represent. Because if you follow what happened was Louis started doing... You know, and I, I'm clearly not justifying what he did, but I mean, how much longer does the guy have to stay up on the cross, man? Like, do you want to leave him up there and bang the Dude. nails in? He lost $30 million, his movie, every show he's ever done, and he shut the fuck up, he apologized, and then he started doing drop-ins. Now, a drop-in means that a comic didn't clear with the club first, he just dropped in politely asked every, all the rest of the, his peers, hey, man, do you want to do a set? And everyone was like, yep, the female comics, the owner who's a female female who owns the seller, all those people. Also keep in mind that half the fucking crowd was female. When he walked out, he got a standing O. America is ready for fucking Louis to come back. Even if you don't like his jokes, it's like, dude, how long are you going to muzzle a stand-up when like them and rappers are the last people we got who are allowed to speak their minds, yeah. man? And even that's closing in. Yeah. They're even closing to spick it in on comics, man. No, and, that, and that's that's the travesty right there, which is the guy apologized. Like as as far as I know, like from the backstory, it's like he would typically ask people, "Hey, do you care if I fucking whack off right now? Like, yeah, that's cool. Is it cool? Like, hey, I'm just gonna beat off in front of you. Is that all right? <laughs> I, I I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say it on the show. It's hypocritical. But I'm like, hey, man, like. Sarah Silverman was like, yeah, Lou like to fucking beat off around me. It's not a big deal. Like, whatever, dude. That's like, what he did. It was weird, but that's what he did. She does. watched him. She was like, yeah, <laughs> totally. I watched but, him a few times. Like, he didn't hurt anybody, and I get it. Like, he was fucking he whacking asked. off. Every he time. He asked. Like, right? He yeah. asked every time, as far as I know. Is there a different story out there? No. No. He did. There is not. Okay. So what the fuck is the problem? Dude? No, there is, like, is there a problem. Oh, but then, like, if you saw that Chappelle had a bit about that in his last special, where Matt Damon came out, pro super, which by the way, fuck Matt Damon. Hey man, but listen, but listen, this is now the Matt difference. Matt Damon now, wait has been now, wait a minute. sucking Harvey Weinstein's I dick. I get it. I get it. Just let me finish. There is now a difference between liberals and the left. All right, I have a lot of liberal views. But that does not mean I'm a leftist. There is now an offshoot, just like these fucking white supremacist idiots are offshoot from the right. There are idiots from the left who have shot off who just think that the First Amendment is not really that big a deal. Yeah. And it's fucking terrifying, dude. The people that are getting on board with this shit. Louis did what he did, man. But, you know, the, the, 
like I'll give you an example. This and I'll I'll I'll, I'll say this specifically. When I was getting, getting ready to do an Operation Comedy show, he did the last show I ever did at the store before that all happened to him. So I was thinking about bringing him back on, and I inter, in, well, I don't want to use the word interview, but I just sort of informally asked all the female vets I know because I've done shows right. for years out here and they're all military and every single fucking one of them was like dude let the, yes he can tell jokes no I'm not gonna fucking listen to a sexual assault seminar from him but will I pay money to go watch him tell jokes when he's a comic and he's funny fuck dude yes enough yeah, yeah. can we just not like hey man Hey man, he said him sorry. Yeah, I, I get it too. Where it's like, dude, come on, man. It's Louis C.K. He's right. fucking incredible. He'll be selling incredible. out. He'll be selling out incredible. arenas in in two years. I, it, to me, it's a no brainer. Oh, I'll be back. What I was saying about about Matt Damon. Matt Damon came out and tried to say something nice about the Me Too movement, but also in the same breath had the audacity to say, "But maybe we should have some nuance and not compare Harvey Weinstein, who's a predator and rapist and who should rot in prison." To what Louis C.K. did. Oh, wait, ah, 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 and the fucking piranhas all just tore this dude apart. Yeah. And you saw, when this is what happens with these groups, is what could have been a valuable fucking ally. A guy with money, with a voice, and the minute those people turned on him, he just went <laughs> like a turtle back in, like, you're on your own, fuck you. The, th- I, the thing I don't understand in this entire fucking thing, which is like, we got like four billion, give or take, years of evolution, right? Where procreation is a necessity of the existence of life. Like, that's what it is. It's like like us throwing a fucking rope into a female is what actually keeps this whole fucking shit show moving around. Totally. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, rope is a euphemism for semen. Right. Yeah, that's Correct. the balance yeah. of the whole human comedy, so, dude. Holy fuck. So, you, like, it is a necessity even more so to our existence when I say it's the same as fucking eating a goddamn sandwich. Yep. So... Everybody's going to get offended. You fucking take your dick out. And it's like, that dick is the same fucking existence. Why we fucking actually have this whole thing going around yeah. as a fucking sandwich being put in your mouth or the same thing as fucking me taking a shit. But you're going to get offended by this whole fucking thing? Like, <laughs> how can you do that? Well, and if I you, don't understand what the if, fuck you... And is if, this a Bible? Totally. Has like Jesus decided to come down off the fucking mountain and say, I like the hole that comes out of your fucking head that you put foot in and no, or food... The noises come out, but the one that puts the shit out of your backside, that one's offensive. I don't like one of those holes. I don't <laughs> yeah. like one of those. Well, it's one of those is <laughs> offensive to me. And you can judge him however you want based on what he did or did not do, but I'm talking about him as a comic, man. He's, he's not fucking a fucking anesthesiologist. He's not a fucking lawyer. He's, he's a fucking comedian, and he's, a and f- he's made his millions saying some of the craziest shit that Crazy. anyone has ever fucking said. So when they were like, can you believe he did a Parkland bit? First of all, yeah. I was like, thank God somebody did. Because yeah. if corporate America paraded one more of these little fucking prepubescent puppets on to lecture me about some shit, uh-huh. I'm going to go shoot up a school. My God, dude. like, I just, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't, you're 14, dude. There's nothing, yeah. you know, fuck, dude. I can't drink with the male one and I can't fuck the female one. I got nothing to do yeah. with you guys, man. You're children. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, yeah. holler me in four years. We might be able to, you know, hang out or something. But yeah, yeah, I'm just weird with you guys. I gotta go. Oh fuck, John. This has been a fucking blast, man. This is the point in the show where we get oh. to the drinking bro of the week. Oh shit, it's time. Indeed. Yes, Dude, it really? is time. Yeah. yeah, we. I mean, this one twenty. Fucking. Out. Yeah, an hour and twenty minutes. Are you man. serious? Yeah, crazy, right? Damn. God, this is like, a lot of fun, dude. Shit. This normally doesn't Was go this way. Was it the whole way. thing that I just threw out? Was that what's ending this whole thing? Not no, at all. That no, was awesome. that's what I was, I was like. Awesome. I, I thought I, on a high note. I, I, okay. We end on a high I, note. I talked too much. That was the real one. Apologize. <laughs> Fuck, did I No, mo- we end on a high note. Is that motor mouth? I got no. sushi. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, okay, cool. Had a bathroom. This is what a podcast we went, is. We went like 20 minutes longer, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were great. You were great. Yeah. We got to do but one. This, we, like, we should, yeah, we got to do this again. Dude. This is the point in the show. We get to the like, drinking bro more, of the week. I got to. So this is somebody that inspired you, somebody that helps you on the come up, or somebody you want to give a shout out to that was instrumental in your life and or career. So who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? You know, I will, man. Um, I so two weekends ago, I did an Operation Comedy show with Ron White, who I had never met, who's a Navy vet, and I obviously liked his comedy, but he is one of the fucking most amazingly cool, like, I will honestly say this, of everyone I've met out here, he is who I want to be in 20 fucking years. He is just cool as fuck, and he has a tequila that... It's actually his. Yeah. It's high end. It's called Number One. And I want to give it that specifically a shout out. I haven't drank tequila since fucking 
you know, Panama City 91. So he told me, he's like, I got a high-end tequila. I'm like, that's not really a thing. <laughs> yeah. You know? Tell I, that to Clooney. And I drank it, and it was spectacular. So number one tequila, Ron White, tater salad, man. Um, that's my guy. Yeah. That's my drinking bro of the week. I love him. Fuck yeah. That's Ron awesome. Ron White, drinking bro of the week. That it's a, is it's a, it's fucking a first. epic. It's a yeah. first. Yeah. Boss. Where can yeah. everybody find you, man, on um, social media? John Stites, J O N Stites one on Instagram, or just Google uh, Operation Comedy. Those are the shows I produce. It's sort of like a, an R rated drunk USO with Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, Jim Jeffries, um, a lot of people that live in LA. We do shows together. So check out Operation Comedy if you get a chance, and uh, you can find it from there. Hell yeah, man. Hell of a show, John. Dude, thank you guys so awesome. much, man. This was a fucking blast. I'm, yeah. I'm bummed it's over. I, I drank yeah. all your beer. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you the right, dude, like up late. Uh, right. For Jared Taylor, Evan Hafer, Matt Best, I'm Ron Patterson. Night, everybody.